All right, we should be recording now. It's been way too long since we got to play this game. Uh, this is What Do I Know About Actual Play? This is our Eberron game using the uh, Quest role-playing game system. And currently we have a group of people working for the Daily Bridge, a newspaper in the lower wards. They are investigating lots of interesting things, getting close to some resolutions here, and we left on a cliffhanger. But before we rejoin that cliffhanger, uh, let's have everybody introduce themselves and their characters. John, why don't you go first? Hello, I'm John Carney. You can find me on Twitter, uh, at John Carney. I'm playing Charples Canatar, a gnome magician who has been ostracized from his community for writing a tell-all book of the salacious info of the assassin lifestyle of the gnomes. <laughs> All right. Hey, using gnomes as a, uh, as a segue, Ange, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us about your character? <laughs> I'm Ange Murray. I'm playing Hazel Summersharrow. She is a doctor slash necromancer who is far more bubbly than anyone who works with the dead ever should be. <laughs> All right. And uh, Bob, why don't you introduce yourself and your character? I'm Bob Everson. I am playing Kithra Broadfist, who is a uh, dwarf fighter who is charged with keeping Charples and company uh, from meeting a sticky fate. <laughs> and last but not least, PK, why don't you introduce yourself and your character, if you would? Hey, I am PK Sullivan. I am playing Mac T. Ray, the shifter investigative journalist who uh, is using the thief class. All right. <clears throat> so, um, we left on a cliffhanger, but before that, we're going to have our, our little cold open where we see our our half-elf newsstand owner, and he is standing on the corner waiting for his papers to be delivered. Uh, he looks at his, uh, at his little uh, mechanical watch that he has recently purchased, and it is showing that the uh, delivery is late, and he stands here a little while, has his coffee, and then new, the, the wagon pulls up, and uh, the wagon driver, who is healing up after, you know, having a bad meeting with the watch officers, uh, looks over and says, yeah, sorry, no papers today. Uh, why is that? Place is on fire. Really? Huh, that's a damn shame. I really like the bridge. Hope to get that thing put out before it does too much damage. And, uh, you know, the carriage operator says, yeah, me too. That's half of the things I deliver in the morning. So, on that note, <laughs> we are going to cut back to our scene. Um, our intrepid reporters and bodyguard had just uh, cornered Eridol, a uh, exiled member of House Kaneth, um, who is tied up with some arms dealing, and they almost... He, yes? Rasa. Well, yes. Eridol er is, uh, okay. is her former name. <laughs> but yes, uh, she's been going by Baratha since she was uh, exiled from her house. Our uh, group managed to track her down, but at the last second, she escaped out of her apartment window. But Mac managed to uh, implant a magical tracking device on her before she got away. However, before anything else could happen, uh, everyone had heard a ruckus down at the, uh, the shop across the street. Our adventurers are on the second floor in this uh, apartment, and down on the corner there is apparently a murder that has happened, and the watch officers are chasing down the uh, Ereni necromancer that the group is, has met briefly before. Avlarath, and he is carrying the bust uh, that contains the spirit of his ancestor that he has been looking for for quite a while. So he is running down the alleyway, the watch is chasing him, and we are going to now ask our uh, group what they plan on doing in this situation. Hmm. That's a good question. I mean, I like him, I want to help him, but that's just me. <laughs> You, sorry, say that again? I like him. I want to help him. But that's just me. want to help him? <sighs> I think we should follow him. 
Yep. Right? That yeah. is, in fact, why I planted the tracker. Yeah, let's uh, let let's uh, let's tear off after this a little party of adventure. I think. All right. So here's my question. Uh, he's running down the alleyway. The watch is following him. Are you going to try and stay far enough behind the watch to have them not notice you? Or are you going to try and find an alternate path? I'm not clear on where we stand with the watch from a reputation perspective right now. Did they, did, did they see us do bad things? Um, you, have, you have had a run-in with some watch members when they were off duty because you were looking into uh, the brother of one of the watch officers. Yeah, that's right. I don't believe we've killed any of them. <laughs> not not no, recently. Sure we haven't. <laughs> we still don't necessarily want to assume friendly intent on the watch's part. Uh, it would probably be better to just stay out of their way. Um, do this on the on the down low. Try to sneak around or find all through the way and run yeah. through side streets and look down the alleys and stuff. All Sounds right. Good so. To me. So basically, you're going to try and hope that Avralas stays ahead of them and find an alternate way to catch up with him. I mean, it will... Yeah. So here's the thing. Max a hunter, like just sort of by instinct and uh, heredity. When you have a way to follow your prey, you let the prey wear itself out and go to ground. Yes, but you have the tracker on on uh Aridol. oh okay this is somebody okay <laughs> yeah all this right. was a development after she managed to get away from all of you gotcha okay uh i mean if are we anticipating a violent encounter with this person i mean you left on good terms last time you uh, met with them yeah mm -hmm. Because as far as we know, our understanding is Eredal slash Baratha had stolen this artifact from his family somehow and was using that uh, to try and create the thing she was trying to create. Uh, a Throw capacitor. Write that down. Uh, the beacon, which oh, the was beacon. That's possibly... Right going to be what triggered the zombie thing inside all of the Warforged to make them an, you know, unquestioning army of Warforged. Um, right. So he's kind of a victim in all of this, even if he's, you know, a scary necromancer person. But, you know, I, you know, that's a little bit of a, a stereotype that I sure. don't feel is true. But... Yeah. Uh, could we... I don't remember if I had Squabbles doing anything. Uh, no, I believe Squabbles is free. Um, he, he had a date, but that got a little bit ruined. So uh, yeah, I you believe. did have Squabbles <laughs> uh, run recon and like sort of patrol the perimeter. Okay. While then. we were dealing with the um, person with the weird implants and stuff. Yeah, but nothing that was a long-term thing that he was engaged with. Okay, so Hazel will, you know, unless there are any objections, Hazel will lean out the window and whistle, you know, do the, <laughs> the fingers in the mouth whistle that I can't do, and <laughs> Squabbles will come flying back, and she'll be like, there's an elf running down that alleyway being chased by the guard. Follow him. Let me know where he ends up, and especially if he gets away from the guard. All righty, Hazel. Not a problem. And uh, he flies off. <laughs> Let's still say we keep close, right? We keep as close as we can without getting seen, so we should still yeah. follow along. At the very least, we can follow the watch uh, mm -hmm. and and see, uh, see if they get run run out or run tired by a... Uh, I think, since Squabbles yeah. is uh, Hazel's good friend here. Um, Hazel, could you give me a d20 roll to see how well uh, Squabbles fares? I'll see how this does. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> well, that is the next question because I got a one on the die. <laughs> 
was weird. Uh, all right. So a one is a catastrophe. <laughs> Just don't kill the pigeon. Um, so I know what's going to happen, but um, I'm going to let all of you do what you're going to do before what happens happens. <laughs> Well, I think at the very least, get down on street level and start following yeah. in the wake of the watch. Yeah. Okay. Um, after a couple of blocks, Mac wants to start trying to think ahead and figure out where, you know, based on Mac's fairly decent knowledge of the city and the terrain, where someone like this might be headed. All right. Um, I think in this case, um, Matt, give me a d20 roll and let's see how this is going. Oh, yeah. No, mm, not much better than Hazel. <laughs> and what did you get? A seven. Hey, at least that's a tough choice. Okay. <laughs> um, I am going to say that you have i would say um you may have a really good idea of where he is going but it's going to require you to uh climb up one of these uh a uh kind of a more rickety building to get a vantage point on him so there is the potential to have to scale the building and have some issues with this condemned building before you can see if he's going the direction you think he's going. Would you like to pursue that avenue? Yeah, I mean Okay. Why not? Um, is everyone going to uh, climb up this rickety building to get this or are you going to wait for uh... No. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine at least Kithra is running by looking at Mac being like, what? <laughs> All right, so uh, Mac, um, I'm going to say, so normally I would actually assume that you're just very naturally agile and you can climb up this building, but since this was a hard choice, I'm going to say this is going to require another D20 roll Yep. because it's condemned and it looked more solid than it was, but it looks like somebody has actually been doing some interior demolition that has made it less stable than it looks Good from touch. the outside. <laughs> what's the critical fumble range um uh two to five is a failure okay well it's just a failure okay and only barely not a one <laughs> so uh -huh. um it is not a catastrophe but as you're climbing up it you don't get managed to get injured and um i will let you explain how as this wall starts to fall away from this uh, condemned building, how do you avoid uh, becoming injured? Uh, I really like the very sort of um, Miyazaki image of like the wall starts tipping and tilting and Mac climbs faster and sort of like just <laughs> as it tips, he just gets out from under it as it <laughs> hits the ground and big big cloud of dust piles up and he's like well okay that's not working I and like starts it. off running again <laughs> all right so yeah all of you were waiting for uh, mac to come down and mac came down faster than you anticipated <laughs> so now like one of the four walls of this uh, condemned building is just laying there in front of you well, um, it'll make it easy to go through i am going to say um Mac, you still have an idea of where they might have gone, but because you had the setback and you couldn't verify where you thought they were going, the uh, catastrophe that happened with, uh, with Squabbles is going to catch up with you. And what happens is you see three people come around behind you, one of which is holding Squabbles. And the person that is holding Squabbles has a dragon mark of House Thrask, which is glowing as they are holding squabbles. And uh, in layman's terms, uh, House Thrask is the uh, the house of uh, finding. Bounty. It's like uh, bounty hunters and trackers and such. And this person apparently 
manage to catch squabbles and use their dragon mark to hunt all of you down. So there are currently three House Thrask bounty hunters cutting you off from being able to exit this place where the, uh, the wall just collapsed. Okay. And I would like to note um, a, uh, my admiration uh, <laughs> for being able to hold on to an angry pigeon. <laughs> that is not easy. And, mm -hmm. and Squabbles, Squabbles does the, uh, the thing. He's like, hey, Hazel, I'm so sorry. I didn't Don't tell you, him anything. You him go you let him go right now uh i Remember would bobble snitches get stitches <laughs> i would but you know we got a job that we're supposed to do and we can't have somebody covering up for the person we're supposed to be tracking and pigeon has nothing to do with your job you let him go right this instant i'll let the pigeon go if you tell us where baratha went we don't know. She ran away. Really? Like you're not like you're not thugs that she hired to uh, to slow us down. What? No, we're trying to find her as well, but that's a secondary thing. We don't know where she is, and if you hurt that bird, we're gonna have words. Uh, you know, I I don't like taking jobs like we took, but we. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes, the cat person loves her bird. The irony is not lost upon any of us. But, uh, behold, yeah, my see, but... We're, 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 we're getting paid yeah. a lot of money, and, uh, we don't, we just have to bring back, uh, proof. We don't have to bring her back breathing. So, uh, I, I just don't, uh, I don't think it's going to end well for any of us here. Look, we were not hired by Baratha or Erdal, whatever you want to call her. We were not hired by her. We were trying to find her. We found her. She fought us. She ran away. We don't know where she went. Give me my pigeon back. Surely you must know me. I'm Trepples Canatar, the Daily Bridge. You've probably read my magnificent article uh food reviews on the sticky bun place the little note called the uh, lickety split remember that i wrote that article it was it was good it was it was well received i won an award i think pretty sure i did i don't read papers that often do you read what's that supposed to mean yeah of course i read i read no, contracts no just because they're orcs doesn't mean <laughs> right sorry i didn't mean to be specious So, and he starts like gesturing with uh, <laughs> with uh, squabbles. So you're telling me that even though you came from her apartment and I tracked back where this, this uh, pigeon came from and it goes to the apartment and then it goes to you that you have nothing to do with her. Yes, we have no, we weren't following her. We were following... We were following an Aranol elf who was stole back his thing and probably killed somebody else and was being chased by the watch. And then he, he looks at you and he goes, uh, was he carrying a bust of uh, something? Yes. Uh, man, I hate this. <sighs> we got hired to recover that too, so. Uh, by who? Uh, because well, that rightfully I, belongs to his family. I can't tell you by who we got paid a lot of money for this well you're obviously being yanked around by whoever paid you because you have bad information you got three seconds to put the bird down three two <laughs> one so this this is what i'm picturing him doing He's waiting until you say one, and he throws squabbles in your face. <laughs> That's fine. It's a hard choice. <laughs> so I'm going to roll to see how well this goes for him. <laughs> that is a two. Uh -huh. So with that being a failure, I'm going to say he, he like gets ready, and he gets ready to throw squabbles as if it's going to go into uh, Kithra's face. 
and blind her and squabbles just flies back up and like lands on his face and starts flapping his wings. <laughs> like i said it is hard to hold on to an enraged bird all i got is that, buddy? <laughs> play stupid games win stupid <laughs> i i so, shout go for the eyes squabbles <laughs> Kethra, you may act first since uh, he screwed up trying to uh, pull a trick on you. Oh. Um. Yeah, you know, we really don't want to have a fight with these guys at the moment. We're busy. Um, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is uh, where is it? Does this Joker count as a minion? Um, yes. Okay. Uh, I am going to attempt to overpower this person. All right. Uh, I.e. probably bull rush them and knock them to the ground. Okay. So. Tony Smalls. <laughs> All right. What would be 20? says you're going to die. Oh, that is really good. Thanks for that. That's when you roll around Google. You are my hero. I got a five. <laughs> All right. Well, that's fun. Um, so, yeah, that is a, a failure. Um, so, in this case, uh, you attempt to um, you attempt to bowl them over. And this uh, this half orc is much more agile than you expected, and despite having a pigeon fluttering in his face, he managed to roll over your back and stab you as he is rolling over your back. Ah! And it does three points of damage to you. I felt that. <laughs> um, who else would like to go, or does anyone have something that would trigger on? A person rolling over your friend's back and stabbing her. Uh, I do. <laughs> uh, I can. Uh, I can quickly shank them, uh, which I believe is just something that happens when I spend. Nope. I make a. Um, you know, I will spend one point one AP. Okay. For uh, the option of you incapacitate. A commoner or minion by touching one of their pressure points. Nice. They fall to the ground unconscious for the next 10 minutes or until they are harmed. So don't kick them when they're down. All right. So the one you are talking to drops, but there are still two other house uh, Thrask bounty hunters here. Do those bounty hunters count? Do this guy's friends count as minions as well, or are they yes. commoners? All three of them are minions. This wasn't a major... Uh, also, did we start with any additional action points? Um, I thought I handed out five at the end of last session. At the end, yeah, last session, yep. I have ten total, so that's why I'm like, what I want to do is going to cost me four action points, <laughs> so... Um, yeah, it sounds like you didn't pick up your last five, so... Okay. Yeah, you should have more than ten. Well, I mean... Hazel has been spending more action points because she keeps having to heal our sorry asses. And we very much appreciate that. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, um, we do. But basically, uh, Hazel will whisper a lullaby and put the other two to sleep. All right. And so the... it's, it's two to put any number of commoners in the nearby area asleep, and then plus one per minion. So that'll cost okay. me four. Okay. So, yes, uh, Hazel starts to. Uh, to uh what, what kind of lullaby is this that <laughs> they're both like growling and getting ready to pounce and then hazel she's kind of irritated so it's probably a slightly you know it's one of those lullabies that when you listen to the actual lyrics is really disturbing which is <laughs> most lullabies but you know what i mean it's the she whispers it and it's kind of got an edge to the way she says it that, that that point at which you suddenly realize that when she's uh, singing about sleep, it's actually like sleeping and never waking up again. <laughs> yes, I mean that's really just that, that's really just Hazel, though. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Um, so now that all of this is, uh, now that the other two have fallen asleep, you have three unconscious house thoracic people, um, and uh, your your pigeon lands back on your, your shoulder and squabbles and goes, I'm really sorry. I, I turned the corner and they were right there. And man, that guy, it's got really big hands. Um, I'm sorry you got, are you okay? Did you yeah, did you? I, I think so. And he like, he starts like working his wing as if he is like, you know, rubbing his shoulder. <laughs> I'm going to start going through the, the guy that was talking to us. I'm going to start going through his pockets. Okay. See if he has uh, this contract on him or something. Um, he has a contract on him. It is not a legal contract because you can't just assassinate people in uh, Sharn. <laughs> But not with he, that attitude. Apparently you can. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, does have, though, um, he does have a list of uh, contacts and where to go and that he is to bring the, uh, the body to this particular location uh, at Cliffside and, uh, you know, has a certain dock that they're supposed to meet at and... You know, it specifies quite a quite a good amount of uh, coin for uh, bringing uh, Baratha's body along, and it specifically mentions any paperwork that she has in her apartment, any documentation, and it then it mentions the uh, bust and it describes you know the bust of this uh, Aaron Al Al Elf. Basically, all the information somebody would need to recreate the device she was trying to make. <clears throat> well i think it's more important than ever than we find our friend with the bust and make sure he doesn't end up in the hands of the watch um i um i will uh frame this without even rolling i will give you a choice here um you can attempt to climb the building again and i will let you know exactly where he's at but you'll have to roll to see if this part of the building collapses too. <laughs> or you can try and extrapolate where he's going and roll for it. Uh, I say we climb the building without Kithra try this time. <laughs> Parkour. Say what now? <laughs> You're not afraid of heights, are you, Kithra? No, but I'm a dwarf, not a monkey. I'm not a climber. <laughs> Someone get up there. Yeah, I mean, Mac will give it another go. All right. Maybe, you know, maybe he, because uh, he was at, going at a pretty good running clip the first time. Maybe, uh, maybe you know, a running leap onto a wall was not the right choice. He's willing Mac, to admit that. Mac, do you need that. to stretch first or like <laughs> longer up or something? That's measured, you know, attempt. And before you roll, you can get up there fine. It's oh, going to be getting back down. Yeah. That's the uh, trick this time. Sure. But sure. as you get up there, um, with you know, with more of the inside exposed, you can you know kind of see a good basically path. chimney climb along. Oh uh, yeah, an interior corner. <laughs> and when you look up there, you see pretty much in the uh, the switchback alleyway that you were thinking of, he is over there, kind of taking a breath. And you notice the uh, the watch. You can see from this vantage point as well are moving in the opposite direction. They might catch up with him in a little bit, but for now, you definitely have a few minutes for a breather. Okay. So would you like to call down and let people know where he's at, or would you like to climb down first? Well, I don't want to be shouting it, so... Gotcha. I'm going to climb down first. All right. A 13. That's yes. not bad. Yes. So, um, with a 13, you manage to get down um, really easily. Nothing happens. Um, there's a few bricks that fall down as you're coming down, so for a brief second, you might worry that you're going to have a repeat performance, but it's all good. So, Mac, what do you tell the rest of the group? Um, I'm sure that uh, Mac has um, a much better... What you know has a, a fairly precise location and can uh, communicate like, oh, it's the alley between such and such streets. Um, it you know it's a it's a switchback alley, kind of blind on this 
on this one side. So if we hurry, we should be able to get there before the watch. Um, I think Mac is going to try to head to the far end of the alley okay. to cut him off while the rest of the people go to the near side. Okay. Um, right. And that is because Mac is by far the tallest of us <laughs> and can probably move the fastest. <laughs> so. All right. Except so you uh you so. you bound around to the uh, far side of the alleyway the rest of you kind of you only have to turn like a couple corners and you're right there and you see at first he is uh he's got his eyes closed he's he's breathing really heavily he's holding on to this bust but then immediately um he looks up and turns towards mac at the far end and mac you know you were moving really stealthily you were in full you know stalking mode um hazel do you have to spend anything to see spirits or do you just automatically uh i think it's just automatically yeah you naturally sense when the remnants of the dead spirit creatures yeah. are nearby so yes um he didn't notice mac it was his uh ancestor that has been helping him to track down this bust that was hanging there invisibly keeping watch for him so he looks up and looks over at Mac. Um, all three of the rest of you that came around the close side are right behind him. He's turned towards Mac, and you get the feeling he probably hasn't really seen who you know who Mac was or anything. It's just he's being pursued. Someone was there, and there is this black and purple energy rushing up rushing up his hand right now. Oh no 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 no! Don't do that. Don't do that. We're, we're friends. And he like spins around on all of you, and you notice like his eyes are completely black at the moment, and uh, his tattoos are like, you know, like exuding purple smoke off of them. And he spins around on you and goes, "Oh, Hazel, was it?" <laughs> yes. Yes. It's good to see you. I see you got your, your your family heirloom back. Uh, yes. Uh, why? What What are all of you doing here? Um, I'm going to have to get moving here pretty soon. Yeah, we. I'm need, in a little bit need, of trouble. We need to help make sure that that heir, family heirloom doesn't end up in anybody else's hands again. Well, I would appreciate that, but uh, how did you know I would be here? Where did you? I, I'm confused about this whole situation. We saw, saw you, you fleeing from Otara's shop. Um, assumingly having murdered her to get your bust back? Uh, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I did not murder her. She was already dead when I walked in there. Which I would have told the watch officers, except they looked very menacing and I don't know how much I can trust them. That's fair We get enough. that. We get that. Yeah. So she was pre-murdered. I get that. It happens all the time. <laughs> That was broke when I got here. No, she, really, she she actually was dead when I when I went into the shop. We you know. Um, why, why is it when you say we know? I feel like there's a wink that is that is just uh, waiting to happen there. <laughs> interpret that however you need. <laughs> you got bigger fish to fry. Let's get you out of here. Charles always sounds like he's about to wink. I mean, yes, I would appreciate getting out of here. Uh, I, I would actually like to find out what they've been doing with my ancestor here. I don't know how far they got with it, but I have an idea of what they were trying to do with it. <sighs> do you know of a good place that we can head to? Hazel will probably look at Mac because he seems to have a better handle for the best places to hide out in the city. Yeah, I know. Um, follow me. There's a there's a shop just down the way. The, the owner owes me a favor. We can hunker down in the back room for a few minutes. So, so you walk into the shop. Mac, what is the, the name of this uh, shop owner? 
Uh, so this shop owner is a halfling grocer. Um, quite, uh, actually legit, like a straight, yeah, normal citizen, not part of the, the family. Um, and his name is uh, Green Lawn. All right. Good enough. Uh, portly little fellow uh, might partake of his own goods a little too much. <laughs> uh, and in you know, good grocer fashion, uh, uh, he is also a brewer. Uh, so he uh, brews and sells his own uh, ales out of the shop uh, to go along with uh, the meats and vegetables and spices and exotic things. Uh, he's doing pretty well for himself. Uh, this area um, I picture as being not quite shady. But yeah, like, yeah this is not one on of the, the more good upscale side. parts of, yeah. the, of the lower yeah, But like on the edges of the upscale yeah. area where it's just like Things are like things are getting a little more blue collar. All right. So uh, Green Lawn seen, sees all of you come in and says, "Hey, Mac, I haven't seen you for a while. I wanted to show you this." And he um, he has a display case, which is um, which is refrigerated with uh, preserved ice, and he has slabs of steak in there. Uh, Max tongue does not drop out of his mouth, <laughs> but it is a close thing. Uh, I thought yeah. you'd be interested. I got some really good cuts in here. Uh, Those look great. Uh, but I'm actually not here for shopping today. Oh, um, what can I do for you? Uh, if we could have an hour or two in your storeroom, just nice and quiet and unattended that shouldn't be a problem um the ceiling's a little low i mean you won't have to squat or anything but you know it's don't jump not really a problem for most of them <laughs> i've been there before so he walks back there and opens the door and uh motions for all of you to go in and you see there's a lot of like uh there's about half open boxes from like uh things that have been shipped in that he's put on shelves and then there's still a bunch of crates and boxes that are still waiting to be put on on shelves here but it is um it's not overly uh cramped but it is about like probably uh seven eight foot ceiling sounds good uh mac will uh, have a seat on a sack of potatoes. <laughs> <sighs> so, um, last I heard, you were tracking someone down and our paths crossed, and we might have been uh, trying to find the same people, and uh, I got a lead on where this might have been held, and um, who was it that you were looking for? Because I have a feeling they might have been the person that killed uh, Otara. We were looking for a woman that was going by the name Baratha, uh, but was actually an exiled member of a fairly powerful house. <sighs> I, you know, it's much more interesting when you just have to deal with... Uh, with the uh, politics of your dead ancestors rather than uh, all of these fiddly business concerns. So I am interested to find out what, why they stole this. I, I want to commune with my, uh, my ancestor, but I haven't quite felt safe enough since I've been on the run. Somebody Would you... wants it back. That's the problem, right? They want it back. Yeah, yes. they want it back. And Would they're you... sending people to kill you to take it back. Can you, how long will it take you to commune with your ancestor? And can your ancestor tell you what they were doing with it? 
maybe about an hour. Would you be able to keep watch over me for that long? Yeah. 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 We do that. Greenlawn's given us the uh, given us a couple of hours back here. So he will sit down and place the uh, bust in front of him, and he puts his hands on either side of the bust, and his eyes kind of roll back in his head, and the all of his tattoos start to glow faintly purple, and he is essentially kind of halfway into an elven trance here, but he's sort of walking in a path that is halfway along the paths of the dead so that he can communicate with this uh, ancestor. What are the rest of you doing in this uh, intervening hour while he is walking the paths of his ancestors? Uh, Mac is actually going to step up into the front of the shop, uh, buy some things, because <laughs> I picked up a new ability. Ah, yes. Poison. You combine, <laughs> you combine goods from any well-stocked store to create a single dose of poison. Choose any <laughs> effects. All uh, right. The effect I'm looking for is black. Commoners and minions are instantly killed. Bosses are hit for 10 HP. Wow. Uh, and it costs four uh, action points for a single dose. Uh, I was hoping to get three doses. Okay. I and I'm I'm going to say this is probably one of those things where it's n no single one of the components that you're picking up seems that lethal. It's the fact that you know how to combine a few different things to uh, make it that way. Yep. Definitely what I was going for. So, so yeah, yeah, he's Mac yeah. will uh, pick up his exotic ingredients and spend the next, you know, hour uh, <laughs> knocking out uh, three doses. So yeah, all of you see uh, Mac like combining like like salts and alcohol and whatever else you might think of until you know it has a different chemical composition than it started with. What about the rest of you? Hazel is probably going back and forth between kind of, uh, you know, like not fawning over, but like making sure Squabbles is okay, <laughs> you know, giving him some seed from her pocket or something, just making sure he's okay and paying attention to what, uh, what our, our elven friend and his ghost companion are doing. And the, uh, the companion ghost that has been keeping watch over him, she is just kind of like pacing around the room keeping an eye out for things as well. She did not join him in the uh, commune here. I'm going to be eyeballing everything too, just to make sure nothing sneaks up on us. Okay. Yeah. Between Kithra and myself, I guess we could watch the front and backs of the shop. <laughs> I, I also, I get the feeling, even if you don't know how to make it, Charples and, and Hazel probably have an idea of what uh, Mac is doing here. <laughs> Like, wait a minute, if you combine that and that, doesn't that make a... It smells familiar. <laughs> so, um, yeah, after this hour passes, um, Squabbles um, at first is having a hard time staying in the air for a long time. He can fly, but, you know, his feathers are a little bit out of place and he's kind of like working them until they're back to where he can actually stay airborne a little bit longer. Not badly hurt, it's just kind of like pushed his feathers out of place, so he just keeps like shaking until they're aligned the right way again. And Avralath comes out of the uh, out of the trance and looks at all of you and says we have stumbled into something very bad. Well then. <laughs> Uh, we've been saying that pretty much constantly for the past few weeks. <sighs> Apparently, there is a facility on the north shore of Lake Seer. And it is an underground facility that's called the Kyber Forge. 
it was uh, a, a side deal that uh, Zorlin Decanus had uh, set up with the uh, with the uh, people from that nation there. The, the one with the unsavory uh, the, the, the what is the proper term? The, the ancestors that are not uh, properly recognized. Oh, Karnath. Yes, the where they don't they don't pay attention to their dead. They they use them. And apparently, all of this is some elaborate uh, means of covering up the fact that that uh, Zorlin has been dealing directly with one nation over others quietly and this woman's father was a a sleeper agent from uh working with uh the Caneth house in this city because apparently house Caneth is divided into different factions and it's very confusing but I, I don't like I don't like that my ancestor was being used to meddle with such things. At any rate, um, unfortunately, because my ancestor was a skilled necromancer that is good at uh, transferring the souls of the various ancestors so that they might be preserved for their wisdom, they perverted that knowledge to uh, coax certain effects out of the souls of uh, Warforged. What we had gathered is they were using your ancestor's bust to create something called the beacon, which was, we assumed was going to activate this thing that was placed unknowingly and, well, unknowingly to the, the bearer of it uh, into many Warforged that would Kind of turn them into zombie servants. Yes, it is. It's a variation of the ritual of the calling, except that instead of establishing contact with the spirits first and speaking with them to bring them back to their bodies, it simply demands that uh, people come back to their bodies. It's a very, very horrible uh, variation on that ceremony. A ceremony can be a very beautiful thing when when it is conducted properly and you spend the time speaking with the spirits before you call them back. So how do we stop this heinous plot? Well, I think uh, if you were to uh, track down this Eridol, uh one of her earliest jobs apparently was working for her father at this Kyber Forge. She knows a great many things, and uh, I imagine that uh, if you could get her to talk about it, it would, uh, would be a great boon for you. She doesn't seem like the talking type. <clears throat> That's how you ask the question. Okay. Well, we were going to try and find her anyway, right? That was the plan. Yep, I think so. All right, now we have an even bigger reason to. We just have more emotional clarity. Would, uh... Screw that lady. <laughs> Do you need me to uh, come with? Because if your friend would, uh... Not mind. I, I wouldn't mind staying here a little longer until I can be sure that I can find some means out of the city without uh, running uh, afoul of the watch. You don't take this the wrong way, but I think you coming with us would actually be a liability. No, no. I would not by any means uh, they take want that, that the wrong bust. way. <laughs> we should not bring it to them. You need to get that bust outside of the city as soon as you can. As soon I as you safely can. I agree. <laughs> I, 
ironically, if I were in one of the upper wards, I could probably uh, book a passage on a skyship. But in the lower ward, I'm afraid that the minute I step outside, I'm going to uh, get accosted. Well, uh, let us go deal with Erin All or whatever her name is. And tomorrow, Greenlawn has a delivery service. We can probably get you out in the cart. That'll get you away from here, out of the district. It's not out of the city, but we can get you someplace where people won't necessarily be looking for you. That would, that would be greatly amenable. I appreciate everything that you have done for me. Cool. All right. Um, so, uh, Green Lawn will agree to uh, keep him here in the back room, and uh, doesn't have any problem with that. And he says, uh, "Mac, just make sure you uh, you're staying safe." Well, I'll do my best, but safe is a relative term these days. I, I mean, I gotta have somebody to sell that steak to. <laughs> Well, I'm sure one of my cousins would be interested if I don't come back. <laughs> so what are all of you planning on doing now? Uh, first thing I'm going to do is say, Hazel, <laughs> do you mind doing a, little, uh, doing a little healing on me? Oh, are you a little hurt? I'm feeling a little down. Okay, I can do that. So she'll... Heal him up. Heal her up. Uh, and that gives you back five? Five hit points, yes. Awesome, Charles. And I've so, now used up the five action points I got at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so Kithra is feeling better. Um, uh, Squabbles is feeling better. <laughs> He's flying in circles now. Yeah, I think I got the kings worked out. Yep, yep. Fly it off. Fly it off. It's good. <laughs> and he lands back on Hazel's shoulder. Where now, boss? I don't know. Where now, Mac? Uh, Mac pulls out his compass and starts getting some readings. All right. Um, from where you're at now in the North Market, it is pointing out towards, um, almost straight out towards the, uh, towards the waterfront district. All right. Uh, so Mac is going to do some basic triangulation. And is going to, you know, head away from the waterfront district to try to get um, get a little bit uh, cleaner idea of what's going on. Okay. Um, so, do you want to head like further, kind of northwest then? Yeah, I I don't have a map of Shard, yeah. so I'm not. I, yeah, I know. I'm just trying to kind of. So you spend about like 10 minutes walking along, you know, past the next neighborhood and it, it still like points back towards the uh, waterfront district. So it doesn't just seem to be in the direction of the waterfront district. It seems to definitely be in that, that area. Sure. Um, Mac's going to pull out his, uh, his uh, notepad. And he's going to sketch out the city real quick. Um, mark where the shop was. Mark where he is now. And then sort of use his compass to figure out the, you know, he wants to get the, the best idea where he can. And once he's uh, got that, he'll hold it up to charcoals and be like, any idea what's right there? 
I don't know. Uh, do I? When you look at it, um, it's it's right between the uh, the the ship's towers and the red light district. Oh, interesting. And the ship town, neighborhood. The, basically, where this part of Sharn is at, you have like the lower district, and then you have this cliff face that goes down into where all the docks and everything are at. So the ship's towers are the things that lower like um, cargo down into the ships. It's also close to where the uh, floating, the the floating uh, battle barge that uh, <laughs> that Hazel has visited is is located at. You know. Let's be honest here. Hazel probably knows the red light district relatively well. Um, <laughs> you know, she does have the hedonist thing in her background. Um, what is next to the red light district in that area? Um, I'm gonna say you, you and Charples probably both know this to a certain degree, but there are some houseboats that people that are really trying to uh, kind of, you know, lie low can rent that are kind of at that border between the red light district and the uh, waterfront. If you had to guess, it's probably, you know, one of those houseboats. <clears throat> mm. Well then. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting neighborhood. visit yeah i think so okay so it takes you probably about 25 minutes to get across the lower ward all the way to the side and as you're walking as you get closer to the uh the center bridge district where you're uh you have to go by here to get to where you're going and you notice smoke rising up from the general vicinity of uh of the uh the daily bridge building Really, we should stop and check that out. Uh oh. Yes, this sounds bad. This sounds yeah, bad. Squabbles, go take a quick look from above to see if he can tell us which building is is on fire. So Squabbles like darts ahead and flies back a few minutes later and says, "It's the bridge. The bridge was on fire." What? Yeah. There's some. Uh, there's some of the local firefighters out there with the. Uh, with uh, coolant wands, but uh, yeah, it, it's it, it's burning. Well, Daisy will take off running. Yeah, I'm going to move <laughs> with a great deal of alacrity. So as you get there, um, you notice that at first um, there's not a ton of fire protection in this di district, and there's a few people with wands firing like little rays of frost in areas here and there but they're not getting a lot of it controlled. But all of a sudden, you see um, this wagon roll up. And on top of the, the wagon is Gelmer. And Gelmer hits a few buttons. And this hose, like his hose-like cannon pops out. And Gelmer like has this targeting. Uh, <laughs> oh. And they're, they're looking at the uh, building. And after this targeting reticle pops up and Gilmer hits this button and it just starts spraying the base of the fire back and forth. <laughs> Go Gilmer. And within a yeah. few minutes, um, the fire seems to be under control. The, uh, the, the local uh, fire suppression people are getting the last of it with their little wands of frost. And How bad uh, is the building? Um, it looks like... Um, there's the offices will probably need to be uh worked on a little bit but overall it's there's not a lot of structural damage and um hazel should be able to tell if anybody died no nobody nobody died good where was the fire uh primarily involved um are you walking closer to the place Oh yeah. yeah. 
that you see some of the local firefighters are kind of like saying, I'm sorry, I can't let you in there. We don't know how, uh, we, apparently we got it under control pr pretty quickly, but I don't know how uh, stable the place is until we have a chance to check it out. We're waiting for the watch to show up to uh, tell us what, what, uh, what to do next here. Uh, Hazel would go over to Gilmer. Gilmer, what happened? Ah, uh, well, what looks like it happened was um, the fire, if I uh, had to guess, I, I think it started in the uh, chief's office. Where's the chief? I haven't seen him. Hmm. Did, was, I mean, the chief doesn't smoke. The chief I mean, it's not cold enough for a, you know, hearth. How did the fire start? What caused the fire? I don't know. I just heard, uh, I, I just heard a little bit of crackling, and I smelled smoke, and I said, you know what? This would be a really good time to try out the water wagon. And I thought, where did I park the water wagon? So then I was thinking, wait a minute. If I parked the water wagon somewhere, I had to have paid for the storage fee. Then I thought, where's the closest storage place? And Gilmer goes on this. <laughs> It is yeah, hard to argue story. with your logic, Gilmer, but uh, this little contraption of yours worked pretty well. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, I'm glad nobody was in the office while uh, it kept burning, but at the same time, I was not letting that press go up in flames. Well, we appreciate your efforts, Gilmer. Thank you for saving the paper. That is like my child. <laughs> is, um, is Lorella around? She is not every basically um, it, it seems like um, most people were out of the place. Gilmer was downstairs working and they didn't really know why nobody was upstairs. That is interesting. Because it was planned. It was in person. Well, something's fishy here. <laughs> Smells like smoked fishy. Yeah, you know. Have you ever had that where yeah you, know, you put it on on cream cheese and then there's like the round the round things and hey, um, Gilmer Gilmer <laughs> we're we're losing the thread here. Okay, we'll get we'll get bagels later, buddy. But uh, let's. Uh, so you're you gonna be around here? Can you can you try to figure out what the ignition source was if these guys will let you in? Yeah, if they'll let me in, I would love to. I've got so many analysis tools in the wagon. See, I was going to try and sell this to the fire department, but, you know, I figured I wanted to test it out first. This is a really good trial run. Yeah, I'm going to have, I'm going to have, go ahead and head in, uh, Gomer, and I'll find the person stopping us from accessing, accessing the scene and I will bamboozle them. <laughs> All right. So they're like, I'm sorry, we can't let anyone in until the watch clears this place. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They become confused about things, uh, who's authorized to pass or not, and basically I'm going to pass Gummer off as a fire inspector and see if I can. They're like this is this is the this is the inspector for the fire. He's going to determine if it's safe uh, to enter. You have to let this person sense. in. Why, why would they have a wagon like that to put out fire unless they're they're part of the fire department? Nobody ever tells me anything. Why didn't the people tell me that they were getting other people involved in this fire department? He just starts like rambling. On. They're there. It's going to be just fine. You see, Gilmer with their shoes on, like is putting up their, their thumb and then they start pulling out all of the uh, forensics tools that uh, they brought with them. It's a sight to behold. <laughs> so, so, that was a lovely distraction from our appointed task. That is exactly what worries me. Mm -hmm. um, there's got to be like like other little shops and stuff near the, the bridge office. Mm -hmm. uh, Hazel would go over to one of them and basically start asking if they saw anything before the fire. So, so the one breakfast stand that's on the uh, corner, um, they're still, you know, hanging around and doing some, you know, they'll sell stuff up through lunch and they're like, yeah, the, buy a thing, so. the, the watch came in and uh, marched a bunch of people out of the building. Probably about eh, an hour ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, and then the fire happened. 
did you see any of the watch members? Uh, uh, I mean, I didn't pay too close of attention. Um, she'll describe um, the, uh, the 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 member of the watch that is the brother to the uh, the the racist author. And, and as soon as you uh, do that, it's like, yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, it does sound familiar. I actually think that was the guy that was giving orders. <sighs> Did you hear them say anything about which watch precinct they brought them to? Um, uh, you know, just offhand, uh, it's literally across the roadways. Um, it's the Black Arch Garrison. Someone just made our naughty list. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Detour. 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 Fair enough. Also, my money is on mail bomb. <laughs> Fire rune in an envelope. Yeah. Let's see what Gomer turns up. I'm not really concerned about that as I was five minutes ago. <laughs> so um, you uh, can reach the Black Arch Garrison fairly easily. Um, there's kind of a little, because uh, the outer edge of the lower wards kind of slopes down, um, you're kind of like, uh, you know, you kind of like go down the roadway as it, you know, scales towards the edge of the city. And you see this uh, fortress that is kind of like built into the, um, like where it starts to rise into the next district, you know, the buildings that kind of ring around into the next part of Sharn. And um, this place is not overly welcoming. Um, it is literally like, it looks like it used to be part of a fortress that has been repurposed. Of course. And uh, when you get in there, it is literally made of like black stone. And there is a watch officer at the desk looking at all of you saying, what can I do for you? Before we go in, um, this is a prison. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a jail. Jail. Somebody's probably died here. Oh yeah. Uh, Hazel's going to take a look around and see if there are any spirits hanging around close by. Uh, and then basically communicate with them. Uh, basically, I spend one action point and I can talk with them and uh, basically find out where our friends are being held inside. Okay. So um, you see a spirit and... Um... Most of the spirits you see usually look kind of like they did in life. You know, sometimes it's idealized. Sometimes if it's really traumatic, it's kind of, you know, what they look like at the moment of their death. Mm -hmm. This spirit is just like a shining bit of light. And they kind of come towards you and can you perceive me? I can, I can. That is interesting. I am still processing what what this means. Did you die inside the the um, the fortress? <sighs> yes, I. They were interrogating me about my potential complicity in a crime. Do you know when that happened? <sighs> I had a much easier time measuring the passage of time when I still had my physical construct attached to me. I understand. You, I am hoping to get your help in something we're attempting to do, but you do know that you can choose to go beyond whenever you choose. You can let this plane go. Yes, I have heard that sometimes spirits will linger when they have unfinished business. I don't know that I have unfinished business, but I must admit I was not certain if I would experience this. 
So I am somewhat reticent to press on and see what lies next, as I was not expecting to necessarily reach this form. Were you a warforged in life? Yes. I thought so. You have a soul just as we all do. I was not certain of that until now, but apparently that seems to be the case. We have friends who are being held, who have been taken by the watch unjustly and brought inside these walls. Can you give us and give me an understanding of what the layout inside is like so I can relay that to my friends? Yes, I, I believe so. Um, if you could provide me with a description of your friends, I will endeavor to find them. Uh, she'll start to describe Lorala Lora, and then stop because she's changeling, so God only knows what she looks <laughs> like right now. So she'll describe the boss. So um, the, uh, the, the light heads off inside, and it's probably about 10 minutes later. And the light comes back out and says, I have located your friend. He is on the second floor. And they kind of like point towards, like they kind of like, you know, move their light back and forth towards this window that is on the second floor. It is in this general vicinity where those bars are. Are there others with them? There were perhaps a handful, and as they describe the people that were there, it is most of the staff that um, that would be there during the day, with you know, accepting uh, Gilmer mm -hmm. and you know any of the reporters that would be out doing things. And. Basically, she'll ask questions to get an understanding of what the layout inside looks like and then relay that to everyone else. So she's standing there talking to nothing and then <laughs> turning back to you three and basically describing the inside of the... the yeah, the we're used to it now. <laughs> so, yeah, it basically tells you that there is... Um, the, the front way into the second floor cells is guarded, but there is a back staircase that is not particularly guarded, but you would have to cross an area where it's fairly easy to see people to get to that back staircase. I leave the planning to our sneakier friends. <laughs> Mac looks at Charples. Yeah. Sounds like the back staircase is our best bet, but we're going to have to be cool, quiet. Cops don't like him to sneak into their building. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have anything too sneaky to get us up there. I can, I can confuse people who catch us, but that's about <laughs> it, which might be enough. One last thing, Jared. Um, she'd ask him what his name was. When I was alive, I took the name Watcher. I don't know if that's my name anymore. Well, I will, rem rem I will remember you and, th and thank you for your help. And whatever name you choose in the future, good luck to you. I appreciate that. And they just kind of like drift away. So, um, yeah. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to call for a break if everybody's good with that. And then if you guys want to think about what you want to do next while we're on break, that would be that handy. Good. All right. Yep. So let's pause the recording and we'll be back in a moment. All right. We're back from break and uh, all of us have been relaxing and not at all pondering on 15 seasons of uh, any TV series. So um, our, our uh, group here has the layout of the prison. They know their 
their boss and co-workers have been locked up on the second floor. And what do all of you want to do now? Do you want to all go in the back door? Or do you want a distraction out front so that it's easier to sneak in the back? Seeking distraction might be a good idea. Before we do this, so we have got to clarify one thing. If we bust these people out of here, do we have a plan for dealing with the watch coming down on us like a crashing airship? Because I don't know that we need to do this or think, we have a plan to deal with the fallout. I think them setting our workplace on fire qualifies as them coming down on us like a crashing airship. Nobody died. Nobody died, but they were definitely the sending a message that we are persona non grata. And I don't want to leave our people in there because I know what they did to that soul that I just talked to. Unless the reason our people are in there is to get us. In which case, we just need to not get caught. One impossible problem at a time, Charles. <laughs> okay, I'm on board. This is a great plan. Let's do this. Distraction out front. We sneak in the back. I bamboozle anyone who looks at it sideways. And if that doesn't work, uh, Mac kills them. Or renders them unconscious for extended periods of time. Yeah, I was perhaps say, no, for uh, the rest of their life. The poison I uh, the poison's got a name on it, and it's not anybody in the watch. <laughs> Then we'll just we'll knock them unconscious. It'll be fine. You want me to sneak in with you two or stay out here and back up Kithra? Oh, Kithra's going to need healing. The next time. You're not wrong. Minutes. I'm not wrong. But uh, yeah, I think, I, think, I think we can handle it. Um, okay. Yeah. Let's split up. We can do more damage than that's right. Thanks, Bill. So what is your distraction that you're planning on? Um, so what's the name of the douche that, that works for the watch that um, is the brother of the... Nesmer. Nesmer. Yeah, I'm thinking like I go to the front door and I just start yelling out his name. Nesmer Grell. That's McGrell. Come out here right now and face me in the street. All right. That seems like a distraction. Okay. You're going all Rocky Five on him. All right. <laughs> I was going to suggest you go a little more Schwarzenegger Terminator, but uh, this is this is good too. I'll be back. So, um, are the two of you going to wait until you see a specific response, or how are you? Uh, how are you planning your sneaking by here? I think we should go in just as he, just as, uh, just as uh, Kithra starts. Assuming the back staircase won't be how they deploy the forces to deal with Kithra. Yeah. Uh, I want to get in the staircase before they start stealing off the building. Okay. And where is Hazel going to be positioned as Kithra is calling out? Um, kind of not hiding per se, but off to the side, not necessarily with Kithra, but there to jump in and get involved if things start getting a little heated. Um, she's also probably going to have um, Squabbles keep watch on the back door that these the other two are going in. Okay. So she can know if like there's any problem, you know, like he can come get me if there's any problems back there. All right. So Squabbles flies over there, finds a perch, keeps an eye on that. Um, Kithra, roll me a d20 to see how this calling out goes. I'm not saying that you won't be able to call them out. I just want to uh -huh. see <laughs> what kind of response you get. Drum roll. d20 roll. Oh, not bad. A 15. All right. Like so yeah, I, I'm going to say, uh, Kithra, you definitely got under Nelsmer's skin to where they come out with some people, but they don't necessarily, um, being that they are the proc procurement officer, there was a potential that they would have taken a few seconds to grab some uh, riot control gear on the way out. <laughs> and they did not do that, 
what did you say that uh really got under their skin uh, under his skin that uh got him to not <clears throat> stop and grab the uh oh jeez <clears throat> bunch of name calling and um spineless yellow bastard um I know what you did, and you can't hide it anymore. <laughs> and you're gonna pay, and your buddies in the watch won't be able to protect you. <laughs> so I'm gonna say that um, because you were successful, like you get the attention of all of the uh, watch officers, but most of them are just looking out the front and betting on what's gonna happen. Yeah. So they don't all rush out to get you, and he didn't grab any riot gear, so he's just coming out there by himself to uh, straighten you out. And you see, like, all of the watch officers surging forward and starting to exchange uh, cash and uh, all of that. So um, now is um, is Charples going to lead the way to the stairs, or is... Uh, or is... Um, Mac. Uh, I think Charples should because if they get caught and they're looking at uh, eye level, Charples might still be in, in Charples is in front. He might still be able to squeak through. All right. So Charples, roll me a d20 to see how well you're crossing over to the, the back staircase goes. 13. All right. Once again, a solid success. Um, so yeah, you're very, I would say Charples is probably pretty, uh, pretty good at, uh, going into paranoid mode and keeping an eye out for anyone. You go into doors and corners mode. I'm little, <laughs> hard to be seen doors and corners kid. That's where they get you. <laughs> so yeah, you cross over to that back staircase and we're going to cut back to, uh, Kithra and, uh, Hazel <clears throat> watching this unfold. You see Nelsmer come out. Nelsmer is a pretty well-built person, but he's not like, you know, the big thug of the uh, department, but he is also very self-confident. And he comes walking out with his, uh, his, uh, his cudgel and looks at Kit, uh, Kithra and says, you know, I don't think you really want to uh, be involved here. We arrested all those people from the uh, paper but as far as we know you're just hired muscle you can still walk away from this but if you're going to call someone out like that i'm sorry we may we may need to uh detain you <clears throat> and he starts reaching for the cudgel this fight's been coming to you for a long time and you know it <laughs> it's time you stand for this so are you saying no, you're yeah. calling out a member of the watch when they're on duty i'm calling out a member of the watch who's Dirty is the water in that freaking cistern over there. Because oh, I'm gonna enjoy this, and he he pulls out the cudgel. But since you're a hero, you can act first. What would you like to do? <clears throat> I am gonna retreat. No, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, ooh, wait, what is my what is my list? Doo -doo 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 -doo. <clears throat> that was lethal weapon. Yes. <laughs> all right. I still do that after all these years, too. Me too. All right. Um, you know what? Let's uh let's just charge. Okay. <laughs> so he's like slowly pulling out this this uh, cudgel to be intimidating, and kids are just all of a sudden bursts yeah, into oh, action. Uh, yeah. Boom! <laughs> roll up and pop them. All right. It's technically not how charge works, but. <laughs> Would you say there's nothing in between me and my and my quarry? <laughs> Where the hell? I'm switching back and forth between these damn. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> I'm not getting the right one. 
Okay. I assume I'm going to need to make a roll to see if I hit this Jag Gaze. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hit this Jag Gaze. Because that is a four. All right. So you go charging and it surprises him, but he still kind of dances over to the side and womps you with the, uh, with the club. And um, with the club, you take three points of damage. Ouch. That's the best you've got. Hazel, what would you like to do? So I'm assuming that a crowd is starting to gather to watch. Mm -hmm. So unless Kithra looks like she's going to go down, what I'm planning on doing is having Hazel she's been you know she's she's a hedonist she's been you know in the red light district and you know on the battle barge and all the, she knows how the how the crowd can influence things so she's going to start kind of moving through the crowd and basically like tell the truth talk about the corrupt things the watch have done and how much nesmer deserves this and just like start seeding those rumors so that the crowd is definitely like <clears throat> their energy to Kithra instead of the watch. Okay. Like, we all know how bad the watch is. We know how <laughs> many people they've beat for no good reason just for looking at them sideways. This guy is actually taking bribes on blah, blah, blah. And they've arrested an entire office of innocent people for no re you know, like just start doing that type of thing. All right, uh, give me a d20 roll. I already know what the one is going to be. <laughs> okay. It's a 19. That is not a one, which is good. That is not a one. I prefer so, that to my one. Yeah, so the, the, the good result here is that people start cheering on Kithra. And you get the feeling that the other watch officers are now kind of hesitant to charge out there and do anything, even though they were going to sit back and, and take bets anyway, because now they're thinking about whether or not they actually want to deal with a potential riot. <clears throat> and awesome now it is his actual turn and not just the consequence of uh, Kitzra's failure. <laughs> and um, I think whatever shall he do um yeah i think he's just gonna club no actually i think since he already clubbed her i think he is going to attempt to uh throw a pair of handcuffs on kithra he's gonna get out the shackles and try and wrestle them onto her so this isn't going to be for any damage but if you have these on you're gonna have to work around having them on. Mm -hmm. She can headbutt. <laughs> um, so that is a 10, which is a tough choice. Um, hmm. You rolled a tough choice? Yes. <laughs> oh, not a basic attack. What's that? That wasn't a basic attack, though. That was a, that was a I'm gonna special call it. I'm gonna up. call it a basic attack because it wasn't like a special ability that they're triggering. This was just me deciding that they were gonna try and slap this on you. Good. Then I parry it <laughs> with my counter attack. All right. So there. Ha ha. So here is um. Here is my question. Uh, normally. If you were to, so pairing just makes you not take the damage, right? Correct. Okay. All right. Then, yeah. Um, I'm going to say, though, do you want to end up with the, with the uh, shackles? Well, that was the thing that I was going to do when it was my turn. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we will keep that in mind. We've run through this round of combat, and now we're going to cut back to uh, Charples and... Uh, and Mac, and then we'll cut back down to here again. So the two of you make it up the back staircase. There is, you see all of your coworkers 
and there is one guard at the entryway to this place. And he is kind of looking down the stairs right now, but he is still in the entryway to this section of the jail. Looking down the stairs at us? No, no, he's looking down to see what everybody is uh, betting on that's looking out the front of the uh, building. I'm going to hit him with a mesmerize. Okay. Dazzle a nearby commoner mini with an optical illusion until you leave the area. The creature, creature cannot move, take action to respond to conversation. Ends if harmed. Okay. So um, you hit him with that, and he's just kind of like fascinated with staring at the crowd after <laughs> after you hit him with that. Absolutely. And we just kind of do, 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 do. Everybody's just down there, one place. Do, 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 do. It's like goodbye. everybody's together. Lift the keys off the belt as we go by. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, and the uh, chief looks at you and goes, what are you guys doing? It's a jailbreak, chief. Uh... <laughs> okay. Um, I want you to to quickly summarize what you're working on that I haven't seen you for the last two days. And that's going to determine how I react to this jailbreak. <laughs> uh, I mean, plot to destroy the city with zombified warforged? Watch she thwarted. Watch infiltrated by a racist, xenophobic, militant, anti-warforged uh, or weapons group. Seems to be destroying all sources of open and free journalism. Okay. Here's my question for you. See, How I close are to that one? Because it makes it sound like we're the reason that <laughs> that they got it, thrown in here. It does sound that way. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he already assumes you're the reason he got thrown <laughs> Just, in here. Right. There's there's assumption and then there's admission. Right. All right. Like <laughs> here's the thing. I know the two of you are good at getting a story when you don't write stories about food. Hey, that sticky bun story was really well received, Chief. So, here's my question. How close are we to having proof for this? Are we talking a day? Are we talking a week? Days. Uh, days away. A couple days. No more, yeah. no more than three days. Or we'll be I, dead. I would say fairly matter. imminent. Yeah. All right, then. I want to write this out. I got a strong feeling the main reason that they uh, that they hauled us off is because they were going to uh, toss the office for any proof of anything that uh, we were working on. So I want to write burned, it out. They burned the office, they Chief. About the fire yet? They did what? They burned. They burned the office, Chief. Set it on fire. So, so the, the again, I was going to save that for later. And, and he know. like goes pale because you know he has invested his life savings in this paper. But like, this is the good news is Gelmer's what did he call it? Water truck, water cart works. Uh, the Who presses, knew? the presses were saved. Presses were saved. Your office is going to need redecorating, but let's be honest, Chief, it was pretty bad, so it's probably okay. And you notice, like, he, he visibly exhales. He goes, so the place didn't burn to the ground. It just No, despite fire. the <laughs> stunning incompetence of the fire brigade. So, and that's, I mean, that's going to be my next story, is just <laughs> how woefully unprepared they are for Inadequate, any, completely. Just <laughs> underfunded, understaffed. Und yeah, that, that's part of the problem, is they're definitely underfunded compared to the other... Uh, we could do a whole article on just in the water, frozen wand things that didn't work worth a damn. That's an article right there. Look at this, Chief. This stuff's paying for itself. Now, can we get the hell out of here? If Gilmer saved the uh, the press and the building. Gilmer saved the press. He did. I, I still want to write it out. I still want to write it out. If you guys can deliver me this, uh, this story, we're going to go to press and we're going to bust this wide open. And if I'm a fugitive, I'm not going to be able to go back to that office. 
Yeah, that that the fugitive part we haven't quite figured out yet. But if we figured getting out was step one, and then we're hiding was step two, let's go do step one, and then you can help us with step two. <laughs> I'm a newspaper man. I need to uh, I need to get this out there. Uh, I'm putting my life in your hands. You bust the story open. We get this to press. If nothing else, you work with Gelmer to get a special edition out. That got my word, Chief. All right. My life is in your hands. Remember that. It's really just more of your career and freedom. Um, <laughs> Triple, you need to stop talking when you're ahead. <laughs> right, right. Sorry, sorry. And you notice, like, some of the other people there are a little more torn because they don't know whether it would be better for them to just get out of the jail cell or... Uh... The chief can stay, but you can take me, <laughs> right? Like, I can go, right? Like, we don't know why they came in here and incarcerated you, but we have a strong feeling that they never intend to let oh, you the, leave. So let's, let's get the, out of here. The, no, the warrant that they had said that they were going to search the offices for... Uh, for evidence that we used illegal means to write that story about the uh, about the sales that started all this off before you even did your investigations. So if they went to burn the place down, that means they didn't even trump up any evidence. This was literally just to uh, just to uh, get us out of the office so they could burn it down. You know what? Add a lot of clarity to this conversation, Chief. If we had it outside. I'm saying we're going to write it out. I have a good feeling about this. You me deliver too. me that story, you get that special edition printed, and we will have them by the short hairs of wherever they have short hairs. We're going to win a Peabody Award, I think. <laughs> definitely, okay. definitely better than the Golden for some. The Golden Parsnip is my second favorite <laughs> award. But yes, you can just tell, like, the longer you're talking, the more excited he is about you getting that special edition out. All right. Okay. New plan. You stay here, I guess. <laughs> We're going to go just save the city. That's good for me. Let's do it. You're going to save the city and write about it. Yes. <laughs> Baby steps, Chief. Hey, how uh, how how you know uh, mangled do you think Kithra's face is at this point? <laughs> let's cut uh, back to the next round of this combat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's. All right. Um, does Kithra or Hazel want to go first? I'll let Kithra because I'm mostly rabble rousing with the crowd. Gotcha. And like right. my, my, my plan oh, is, rabble, if rabble. things go sideways for Kithra, try and turn the the crowd into a mob. There you go. <laughs> You're setting that All up right, really so well. <laughs> I spend a point on disarm. All right. And take the cuffs. So yeah, you just like slap those out of his hands and grab them. Doink. Oh, look, these are mine now. Let's see how you like them. Clamp. <laughs> do, 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 do. Suck it, son. Natural 20. <laughs> oh yeah. With a natural 20, I feel like I not only get the cuffs on this dingleberry, I get him, flip him, roll him, and get him cuffed behind his back. All in one deft move. Yeah, I, anyway. I'm actually I'm gonna I'm gonna do you one better. You get him, you get his arms pinned behind him. And he is, he is like off balance, but he tries to struggle to his feet and he charges you and smacks his head on a lamppost and knocks himself out. Even better. <laughs> and you see like people start, uh, you, know, chain, you know, exchanging cash inside based on their bets, but they're still looking at the crowds. So you can tell they're, they're calculating whether they should come out and... Uh, come out and deal with this person that just embarrassed a watch officer so what would hazel like to do now can hazel encourage the crowd to go basically happily surround kithra and basically prepare basically create a barrier between her and the guard 
Yeah, give me a roll. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, you may get your riot because that was a two. Oh, no, uh, uh, that's uh, just uh. a failure. That's not a... <laughs> oh, man. Just a quiet riot. <laughs> Come on, girls and boys. <laughs> I look at you expectantly like, where are they? I'm getting my ass handed. Oh, okay, I'm not getting my ass handed to me out here. I'm, I'm winning the fight, but I'm going to say where are they? the failure, you were trying to get them to carry off Kithra and have the watch like not want to deal with this. I'm going to say what actually happens is a few of them start getting in the watch officer's faces <laughs> and now you have the watch and the people starting to get into scuffles and this is starting to turn into a brawl in the street right now <clears throat> the good news is um charples and uh and matt can get down that back staircase really easily right now <laughs> Ooh, down we go but you do see a few of the watch officers starting to go in and, and get the riot gear as you're coming down the stairs mm. oh sure Especially now they find the, better the right part gear. of valor yeah, time to go. Where, 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 where's, where's the boss? Where's the rest of the crew? Did it work? <laughs> so yeah, and you're hearing like the crowds. You're, you know, well, you're seeing like uh, windows start yep. to break and people start shoving each other and throwing fists and everything. And the I just gave you the louder. greatest distraction in the history of distractions. <laughs> It turns out that the chief thinks our plan... He's a stark, raving lunatic. <laughs> well, he told you, no, to... leave me in prison? Yes. Yes, he, he said that. He was that. quite insistent about it. Got all shouty and excited. <laughs> Who knew that could happen? I mean, that's his normal way of talking. Fair point. That's, that's a really good point. Okay, but there are things you do not do when people are trying to break you out of prison. One of those is shout. Okay. So we got to go. Oh yeah, no, we it's time to leave. See ya. Yeah. We so yes, you're, you're you're hearing like all of these uh, punches being thrown and people, and then you see like some of the uh, the police come out with the riot gear, which in this case, you know, is like. One first, you know, one of the cops comes out with these gauntlets that have runes on them, and they slap them together, and there's a basically a thunder wave goes out and knocks a bunch of the crowd over. And <laughs> I'm outie. <laughs> you know, this Basil is my whistle for, here. For, Too bad we can't stay. <laughs> Basil will whistle for squabbles, and then let's move, let's run. <laughs> let's go, Hot Wing. All right, where would you like to go now? Well, plan I mean, B. Back down to the. Uh, we've we've got a pretty good lead as to where Art Art all or Bothra or whatever her name is is hold up. You know, Mac looks at his compass again. Um, presume it's still pointing at the same yeah. place. I mean, um, if we take her down, that's that puts an end to it and we can put this all behind us. And do we already have her, her schematics and her papers or do we just have like remnants of her schematics? And you papers? had a partially damaged one that gave you an idea of what the Denkor capacitor was, but not enough to where you could recreate it from there. Okay. And you also had papers showing that she had had her name changed, but you don't have any of these other papers. Okay, so we still need the schematics. So, wow. the or docks, to destroy them. The docks are down off of cliffside, which means there's a cliff. Yes. Um, you can go to the uh, ship tower, which has elevators, or you can go down the uh, the long, long staircase that goes down the side of the cliff to get down to the docks. Or however else you would like to, like, I'm not, I'm not limiting your options if you want to dive off the cliff and see if you can land in garbage <laughs> I would assume Charples and Mac tell us about 
chief wanting us to print something as soon as possible. So Hazel is going to have Squabbles fly back to Gilmer with a message that he needs to get the, uh, the, 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 the printer, the machine in working order at ASAP. All right. So Gilmer, they are, uh, they are more than happy to uh, get their baby working again. So they will uh, be working on that. I mean, we're going to take the elevator, right? I think so. Why not? <laughs> you it's see, there's, there's there's a lot of people space. and cargo, you know, that are, you know, these aren't like super fast elevators, even though they are they are magical. So there's a lot of people around. I feel comfortable with the elevator. If it's if it winds up becoming a you know a, an isolated experience, that's less comfortable. But if there's a lot of people, I think we're probably safe. Or we won't be, and it'll be really exciting all the way to the bottom. <laughs> so you're yeah, standing in was... line, or okay? Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I guess we can uh, we can take the elevator. You're standing in line for a little while because you know you have to wait for the uh, proper turn, and you know you see some people go in there, and then the thing just slowly lowers down. You see the the freight elevator get loaded up with a bunch of crates and slowly goes down towards uh, towards <laughs> the uh, the people at the bottom and um i am going to roll this d20 for no particular reason all right <laughs> no particular reason so i am going to narrate off screen um our your 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 quarry baratha the former uh former member of house uh Kenneth, is so confident that she has gotten away, that she is not paying particular attention. So however you would like to approach this houseboat as the, uh, the compass is guiding you there, you may plan however you want because there may or may not have been a one involved when she was uh, <laughs> keeping an eye on ways to come down here. So you have freedom to plan how you're going to approach this houseboat. Uh, okay, so the houseboat is like a normal houseboat as we would see here. Yeah, there's like a cluster of two like, or three of them. Okay, it's not like a floating air house boat. No. Matt, house house to, airboat. I have to ask, is one of those things you made back at the, the grocers, is, does one of those have her name on it? <laughs> what do you mean one? <laughs> we do you know we do have to get information out of her first do we 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 do, gotta do get those schematics if we don't get those schematics and destroy them somebody else is going to find them and come up try and do the same thing again in however right. long sure sure you know and if they like start a making a prototype we us. know where it is i'm you know uh, I'm thinking for the most part, the, okay, so she fled. Yes. She's not, go she's not going to leave those schematics unattended. It's, the, they're too important to her plans, her goals, everything that she wants and needs to accomplish. She's not leaving those she's somewhere. She's got them with her. Yeah, she'll have them with her. And she hasn't left here since she arrived i'm just saying sure. as much as i know that we want to erase her from the ledger um we need to also well i, I guess i can just question her afterwards okay let's just do with it. <laughs> yeah, you can talk to the dead okay. right okay See, I, yeah, like, I like how that realization just <laughs> on its own there we go okay um so I I mean it seems to be the theme of the night, but I just like the sort of multi-pronged approach. Mm -hmm. Um you know, somebody goes up the gangplank, someone else, if there's our if there's an open window or something that we can climb into from the water side and nobody is and somebody is fine with uh, getting a little a little wet. I, mean, I can volunteer for the frontal assault. It's kind of your thing. 
I'd uh, I'd be willing to take the uh, the aquatic approach. Sure, because I, I could I could do that. You might be better off on the other approach that requires a bit more stealth, right? The water is probably a more natural, stealthy thing. I can probably do that. Okay, I don't mind that. We just need to make sure we have all our exits covered. We don't want to running away again. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I will say, as part of her rolling her one for uh, being ready for all of you, if you get close enough to this houseboat when you're setting this up, you can vaguely see her um, inside, and she looks like she is working on some sort of construct. Okay. It's not a, not a Warforge, like actually a construct, so it probably just has limited, you know, programmable go do this. Kind of like a washing machine, you know. Yeah. Right. Sure. Or uh, or one of those horrifying Boston Dynamic dog things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, who would like to act first? Um, okay. Yeah, Kithra up front, and then Water, and then Mac, I think, might be the way to make sense. Yeah. Okay. All right, Kithra. And maybe you have Hazel stay on the, the dock for the moment. Okay. Back up Kithra and come in the front door as that becomes an option. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I think what I'll do is I'll come pounding up the gangplank. Okay. <laughs> and um, like break to the cabin door and just blow through it. Okay. Um, as you're charging up there and you break through the door, for a split second, you do get to see the construct that she's working on. There appear to be two of them. They are, um, but they're both kind of laying down and she's doing maintenance on them. And they look like they have a big steam reservoir and they have this sort of cannon torso and then two legs to walk around on. So these appear to be walking steam cannons that she is uh, working on at the moment. Awesome. Sir. I mean, hats off to her. That's pretty damn cool. <laughs> yeah. So, Kithra, you charge in, you knock down the door, you see her working on these two walking steam cannons. It's over. Whatever your name is. I can never get the difference <laughs> between the two names, so whatever. <laughs> vile woman your evil plot is thwarted you can come with me quietly or you can fuck around and find them <laughs> and she drops her wrench as you come in and she goes oh don't worry i'll come along quietly and you just barely notice she's got like this ring with a wire on it tied to one of her uh, hands and she starts moving that uh, that finger up and tugging on that wire, which appears to be attached to a backpack. What are you doing? Um, well, you know, I'm going to have to cut that wire. Um, <laughs> if your arm comes with it, um, so be it. She does not appear to stop. She gets ready to just yank on this thing. So, <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, <laughs> I could disarm her. <laughs> Literally. No. Literally. Literally. Very nice. Uh, I'm pretty sure she's not a common room. No. <laughs> pretty so, sure she's um, also not a minion. No. <laughs> she would have had minions if you didn't surprise her. <laughs> it's for the best. I know. No. I feel like it's worth asking. I mean, she's wearing the ring? Yeah, it's like, it's it's on. It's around her thumb, and then she's yeah. got the wire going to the backpack. I don't suppose I could disarm them. 
I would say you could cut the wire. Then we'll go with a uh, just pull the axe and cut the wire. Okay. And get a three. <laughs> that's the way the cookie crumbles. All right. Um, so you get a three, which means that uh, with a failure, she gets to uh, counterattack against you. And um, so she doesn't finish. She starts pulling this. You swing at this. She reaches into her belt and she pulls out um, what looks like a rod of some sort. And she gets a 15 with the rod. And she touches you. And there is a huge flash. And you take six points of damage. That, my friends, did not feel good. <laughs> How much do you have left? None. <laughs> I can't heal you in combat. So, so Kithra goes flying across the uh, room and hits the wall and slides down it. Bonk. <laughs> Who would like to go next? Uh, <laughs> yeah. well, and all saying. of you see this flash coming from the cabin. Uh -huh. yeah. Mac would like to go in through one of the windows uh, behind okay. um, Eridol and uh, attempt to shank her with a poisoned blade. And you definitely see like this backpack could looks like it's the type of thing that's going to unfold with some nasty you know, artificer type weapons. Yep. <laughs> All right. So here goes. Uh, 13. All right. <clears throat> so um, with a success, what do you do to her? Uh, so my normal weapon damage, which I believe is two. Yes. Right. Because, like, I poisoned the blade and I stabbed her with it. Mm -hmm. It's still a stab, but the black poison deals 10 HP of damage to the boss. Nice. So, um, you, you slash her at first and she kind of rolls with it. She's like, oh, how did you get in here? And she, and she's kind of laughing because you just kind of like, you stabbed her a little bit, but she's wearing, like some padding underneath this. And then she goes, that wasn't so, ah! And she feels like this like sharp pain going all down her arm as it, uh, as it gets in her bloodstream. But she is still up. All right. Um, yep. That's what I expected. Who would like to go next? Uh, I would like to go next and I want to crawl out of the water and come in through the, the back side of the houseboat. <laughs> I want to be covered in seaweed and kelp because this is fucking disgusting. Uh, so I'm going to kind of just, just ugh, and then I, I'll walk out and see her and then I'm going to... It's a homemade it's, ghillie suit. It's, it's, <laughs> it's just it's just disgusting. I don't like to be dirty. Uh, and I'm going to probably throw a bedazzle uh, okay. at her, which is four prismatic bolts that spark brilliantly. All right. Each bolt hits for two. I'm going to give all four bolts. All right. And it just does that, correct? When it just does it. Yeah. So okay. it costs me four AP. So after you uh, stab her and you see her, you know, kind of convulse in pain as this uh, poison runs up her arm, all of a sudden from the back, you see the swamp monster crawl onto the <laughs> Swamp, and swamp monster. These these four, you know, flashing orbs, you know, surround her and they strobe her and all of a sudden she kind of rolls her, her eyes back in her head and she falls over. Yeah. Oh it's Miller time. <laughs> that that was good. Was, we got her. Let's uh, tie her up. <laughs> we got her. And Kendra's just her. over there on the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, did Kither die again? Please, we'll come yeah. running in. And uh, just, uh... I'm, yeah, I was going to say, first step is to uh, remove the artificer backpack. Because <clears throat> if she's not idea. dead, dead, and she wakes up, that would be bad news. <laughs> if, if we are out of combat because she is unconscious, Hazel yes. will come running in and heal Kithra. Please. Okay. There, this houseboat is filled with like half-built prototypes and just reams and reams of paper and notebooks and it is just filled with things. 
Uh, Kithra, take back 10 points. I'm going to heal you twice. Woot. And there is also a distraction desk. work. <laughs> there is a chest with legs underneath it that walks on its own. Hmm. Did that the one's over? <laughs> it I has. I saw even... one of those in Ankh Morpork one time. This <laughs> one only has four legs, though. Ah. <laughs> but yes, it is filled with even more of these ledgers and notebooks. And she is out cold at the moment. Um, we need those schematics. Yeah, get the schematics in the chest out of the uh, out of the book as quickly as possible. So we'll walk that thing out. I definitely want to tie her up though, or secure her in some some manner. You are yeah. definitely seeing like uh, you know ledgers saying who she has paid out things to, and a whole bunch of different contacts. And um, you see like her personal journal, and you see the schematics for all of the necrocapacitors and the beacon and um anything that imp implicates the watch uh-huh yeah oh yeah, oh, if, yeah. You go, if you it's it's fairly easy to look through the uh the ledgers and find you know to implicate your friend <laughs> that you just uh <laughs> that you just trust up outside of the uh, watch office but um who would be the most aware of all of you I know it seems obvious, but I thought I'd ask. I was going to say probably Mac. Yeah. Yeah, pure perception-wise, awareness of surroundings, that would be Mac. Yeah. Magical awareness, I'd probably give it to Hazel. Yeah, so so Mac, uh, give me a d20 roll. Oh, 20. <laughs> Woo so, uh, not only so in this case, you didn't hear someone on the top of the boat. You actually glance out the window and see figures running towards the boat. Oh boy! Uh, hey, Kithra, we've got company coming on, coming in up the docks. Uh, Charples, let's get as much as this packed up as quickly as possible. Uh, Hazel is she tied up, gesturing at. Uh, Baratha. Okay. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to say, for you rolling a 20, you you can definitely tell these are gnomes that are uh, sneaking up here. Oh boy. Um, okay. And gnomes and sneaking uh, generally means like stabby, stabby death, right? Usually. Yeah. Assassins. Sometimes they use magic, so it's not necessarily stabby. Sometimes it's roast, roast, fire, fire. Sure, sure. Yeah. Variety. Cool, 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 cool. Oh God, it burns. It burns. Yeah. I, practicing, uh, practicing right, so your we, lines are good. We are unsure if they're coming to kill us or her, uh, so we need leverage on in both ways. Um, Kithra, changing plans. You're going to be standing over Baratha with your axe. And hey, Charples. Yep. Give me the give me the schematics for the necro capacitor. Hand them over. Uh, and uh, Mac is going to grab a candle. Uh, or I'm, I imagine there's a candelabra or something for light. Um, That's because there's uh, she had a a lantern out. A lantern? Cool. Mac is going to be taking the cover off of the lantern. Um, and let's, uh, let's go see what the gnomes want. Uh, this is the Mac version of Shoot the Hostage, I see. <laughs> Doing that again, are we? So, um... They want us... We can't. If they're coming to kill us, we can kill her. That's if good. they're coming to kill her, we can destroy the work. We just need leverage so that we have a have a couple minutes to desperate plan. Make a deal. Let's do it. <clears throat> so um, there are five gnomes on the uh, on the boat now. And the lead gnome goes, you know, 
they should have told us there was a shifter. We would have taken completely different uh, different precautions. And then after a second, he looks over at Charples and goes, you. Well, good news. I don't think they're after us. <laughs> Hi. How you doing? And I'll, I'll give the kind of try to sneak this stuff away sign to Mac. Maybe you can get the stuff out of here. Well, I delay them. Uh, well, clearly, you know, we need to get this job done. I do. This houseboat needs to be completely incinerated, and we need to have proof that she is no longer breathing. We even got paid extra to make sure that no resurrections are possible. Hmm. Honestly, a, not opposed to that. All you want is the all you want is the all you want is the woman. Well, yes, but also we need all this documentation. It's inside the boat. It's hidden inside magically. It's been etched into the walls of the houseboat. If you destroy the boat, you destroy the the material. Uh, I gotta think that uh, we've been. From what we've been uh, hearing from the information we gathered, there's lots of books and ledgers and things. Can't let any loose ends come out. Now, I will say, we're getting paid a lot here. If you hand over everything we have, everything you have, we'll catch you in on this. I got a counter proposal. The schematics, the materials, I don't care about. We need the documentation on the contacts with the watch and tell me something, Mr. Gnome Assassin. What would you like better than to watch the watch burn like this houseboat? So, uh, you know what? You are dealing very forthrightly with me. So I got to let you know there are people besides the watch that are implicated in those ledgers. I don't really care, and I'm pretty sure my employer doesn't care if the watch gets implicated, but he needs to make sure that his ass is covered. Mm, so deal. if you let That's me go the through these and uh, redact anything that uh, my employer might want taken out, we might be able to deal. Mac, what do you think? Um, you know, Mac right now is playing it very cool. I, PK, have a very important question for the GM. Yes. <laughs> How many, what would it take for Mac to be able to surreptitiously either copy that data now or have copied it in a flashback? Uh, because I have my dossier. A magic uh -huh. book that copies things. Yes. Uh, if you press a uh, press your dossier against a document, it makes a legible but imperfect copy. Um, I will let you make a roll to see if you can do it without them noticing it, since Charples is uh, alrighty is discussing this with them. Um, I just wanted to summarize in case this. This uh, got lost in the uh, in the shuffle. One of the things that the uh, bust did clarify is that one of the three people vying for uh, control of House Caneth could be implicated for working with the Emerald Claw with right. this data. This is a potentially gigantic story. <laughs> yep. I will say I'm not inclined to let that go. I Hazel think I want not, this. <laughs> Hazel will not rest until those schematics are destroyed. So okay. the schematics the can schematics, work. yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Charples and I are getting getting Pulitzers in our eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and the Peabody is within my grasp. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you want to make the roll to um you, I will, I will put it this way. I think Mac is, Mac is canny enough to have picked up that, that's the, 
that's the employer whose uh -huh. you know ledger you need to copy. All right, here we go. Father? Can I can I assist this role anyway? The, the father isn't the head, but the father is working for the uh, the uh, that particular. Okay. That is a fourteen. All right. So that is a success. You managed to copy all of the contents of this ledger that directly implicate one of the three leading contenders for control of uh, House Caneth as working with the Emerald Claw to develop this uh, technology for sale to uh, Underworld Contacts, which they're not allowed to do this kind of underhanded dealings, uh -huh. especially not, you know, <laughs> this is going to potentially really change the, uh, the balance of power in House Caneth and among all of the uh, houses at this point. So you have that copied. I'll and they and they don't they don't they don't catch this because he was successful with this. Like that's fine. We'll we'll take the deal. Cut us in. You can have all. We'll walk away. All right. Um. One more thing. Uh. We need to make sure that our employer is covered. We're perfectly fine with the watch going down. I think we're there's a little bit of a gray area for any uh. Any politicians that may not be directly implicated, but might be uh, uh, looking the other way. How do you feel on that one? I think we both know that it's not going to stop there. Someone's going to have to take a hit. You know that's going to have to be. So I would say check back with your employee and figure out who it's going to be, then let us know. I'll tell you this. I'm going to make a judgment call because I want this taken care of. If I, uh, if I give you the... Uh, the watch chief in the uh, Black Arch Garrison, not just the uh, not just the little fish. Then that seems like a big enough person to take a fall, right? Yeah, yeah, we we can do that. All right, let me see those ledgers, and we'll finish up our business here. Yep, uh, we'll open the case, and I'm going to do um, a magic trick, uh, like a bright light. Let me let me give you some light so you can see better. And I'm going to do like a bright light to help cover any disarray that's already in there that might have been happening. So just like a little flash to maybe ruin the night vision kind of thing. All right. So yeah, they're, they're looking through very carefully. All five of them are going through these things and they're stacking, you know, and you know, every so often they'll hand you like, you know, a, a folder or a notebook for you know, the, to implicate the watch officers and they're stacking all the other things here and they stack all of the schematics over in the other area. And um, they're like, okay, I think this is everything. Um, you, got, you got what you need for the watch. So you got your story. And um, all I need is for you to uh, leave her here and we will make sure that there's nothing left of this uh, this thing, but uh, dust motes. I'll grab our stuff, turn around and say, leave who here and just walk off. <laughs> so we know what Charples and uh, Mac are doing. What are Hazel and Kithra doing? Hazel wants to get, Hazel is not leaving any schematics behind. They are getting <clears throat> destroyed. I mean, yeah, that's the plan. They're being left on the boat, that's, which is yeah. getting torched. I want to watch torched, them yeah. do it. I, I want to watch them watch, destroy everything. Yeah, I will sure. watch the schematics get destroyed. Because if these guys are working for a member of House Caneth who has potential dealings with the underworld, he'd want these back. Okay. Uh, you want to make sure it goes down? That's cool. So uh, as the two of you stop, you know, while the other two are kind of turning their back and walking away, they're like, is there a problem with our deal? No, 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 no. You said you're setting the boat on fire? Yep. Okay, then Hazel will knock the lamp down onto the schematics. <laughs> yes. All right, it's a little messier than we would have done, but uh, that's fine. <laughs> so yeah, the uh, the lantern goes down, the schematics are all currently burning, and they're like, I guess we got to do this on a little bit faster timetable than we thought. Uh, hustle on off. <laughs> 
Uh, Mac is going to start heading home. I'm getting like, away from this before the, the watch shows up. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, partially leaving before the watch shows up, but also he wants to leave before they start thinking to maybe check him for anything. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> so when you get about like everything's good and burning, when you get about twenty paces out, the gnomes get off of it, and one of them pulls out a rod, and the rod fires this uh, this greenish beam. And the boat starts to implode a little bit. And once it reaches a certain point, it just explodes outward in dust and sparks. Well, that was a neat trick. <laughs> also, they have a rod that can cause things to implode. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's 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 a neat trick they got there. Run away. Be right back. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm gonna say um we can we can reconvene back in uh, the foundation section of the uh, lower wards. Um, whose place do you want to end up at? Or do you want to head straight for the uh, for the bridge? They need to write. Uh, yeah, I mean, we need to write, but I don't know that uh, our space to write in the bridge would be in a good yeah. state. Good state um, to do it. Yeah, the least the least uh, damaged thing is the uh, press. Yeah. yeah, so we can't write in the office here. But I think um, let's find like the sticky bin place around the corner. Yeah. All right. Thank like you. You wrote a good review. Lickety spit. <laughs> name of the place. It's not the most appetizing sounding place, but it, you know, the the buns are really good. <laughs> so There's yeah, actually a, a frozen custard place here in Chicago named Lickety Split. Nice. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Right. So here's my question. How exactly are you, you have, you have the uh, proof here. <clears throat> you basically have enough proof here to bury the uh, chief of the Black Arch Garrison as well as the uh, procurement officer and a number of other people that were on the payroll for her. You also have this information that directly uh, details that particular forge. And now, granted, nobody's going to go arrest him, but that's going to be public that that forge exists and that it is producing arms for. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think the question here, as I see it, is we we're we're fine writing the article that burns down the watch, and that's fine. Yeah. The question is, do we? Do we tip our hand that we copied the ledger by naming the the I underworld politicals? So. I don't think so either. I think we yep, save that. I think that. we hold on to that because uh, that might be useful leverage in the future. Wow. Um, and uh, yeah. it would also be uh, not good to immediately double, crap, double cross the assassins. Yes, and uh, have a one stick thing we just explode into dust. could do is we could give it to someone else to write that piece yeah. and not us. Preferably somebody else not, very, very far away. Not, <clears throat> at the, not at this paper, but let's let's get this one out. It'll do enough damage. It'll get the chief out. The chief will be happy. And then we can talk to the chief what he thinks we should do with the, the, the real dangerous stuff. Yeah. All right. Um, and also, uh, we are going to be making no small, spilling no small amount of ink that the uh, that garrison attempted to destroy this paper. Oh yeah. All right. Who would like to make the roll to see how successful this story is? Go for and it, Charples. We're probably going right. to jump ahead about a week for the aftermath of this story. A 17. Yeah, Woo buddy. All right. Very successful story. Um, and obviously, you know, all of you contribute to the story, but Charples is Charples having the big expose, you know, book is kind of tweaking it here and there to make sure it has the sharpest edges possible. And uh, you manage to get in there. Gelmer very happily gets his gets, gets their baby running and prints out as many papers as they can possibly export, and they get all over the place within a week's time. The watch is extremely embarrassed. Uh, politicians from 
the upper wards are already, you know, having people replaced at this uh, at this garrison, and there are <clears throat> charges being filed against most of them. Your boss has been released; all charges are dropped, and uh, renovations, such as they are, are going on at the bridge. And it's being paid for by the city watch, of course, because <laughs> reparations yes. must be made. So I'm going to say at this point, the boss is freed. It's been a little over a week now. Um, you know, this is you know this is a pretty big deal in the lower wards. Mm -hmm. But um, all of you are in the boss's office, and he's like, "All right, now that things are getting back to normal, what else is going on here? This wasn't just a, just a wasn't just about the uh, watch, was it?" No. And we'll we'll cut him into the whole story and the whole. Uh working together with the Emerald Claw and lay that all out for him. I, I really hate to say this, but I don't think if we break the story, it's going to do what we want it to. What do you mean? Well, people that read us in the, uh, in the lower wards, they're going to, uh, they're going to trust us. But all of the, uh, the big name people that can actually do something about this, that'll actually shift this balance of power, we gotta, we're going to have to get this to uh, one of the uh, papers. Oh, not the Chronicle. Uh, I hate to say it, but they're going to have the reach and the clout to do it. There's nothing and... sane that they can't break the story on the condition that they work us in as having been in, 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 influential in... Nope, nope, I don't, nope, don't nope, think we so, We no. do not want that. You know, you know <laughs> like I us Kithra? individually, no, like the paper. Haven't you died enough this month? <laughs> no. That the Chronicle's got some protection from that kind of blowback that we're not going to have so and the yes. distance the dis putting distance between us and the story uh is going to be key for plausible deniability so that no assassins don't just descend on us like monkeys fall don't you guys want any of the credit you know no as long as i get a good sticky bun out of it i think i'm okay <laughs> So, um, are all of you agreed on uh, taking this to the the Chronicle? Then, I mean, uh, none of us are happy about it, but <laughs> it's you know, I I am more excited to uh, to continue breeding. <laughs> so, and and Hazel looks at it as is it's not only protecting the four of us; it's protecting the people around us because the people who would want to keep this quiet would have no hesitation of wiping out an entire neighborhood to quiet us. So taking this upstairs, yeah. you know, to a larger, a louder voice will, you know, protect the people around us as well as our own hides. All right. So um, I'm going to say, um, and we're kind of, we're kind of circling, I think the resolution of this now. So once you take this to the Chronicle, you have some of their reporters looking through all of your materials. They ask you a little bit back and forth to get you know a little bit more of a basis to write this thing. Um, and I think uh, I'd like to cut forward probably another uh, couple weeks. Can I? Can I just? Um, so Hazel, in the meantime, through all of this, she has the list of mm -hmm. all of the Warforged that were in debt to um, Otara mm -hmm. um, because Otara is dead. She is going to be contacting every single one of them and making sure that they're, they know they don't owe that debt anymore. Awesome. Um, how, um, how did you sneak out um, your, uh, oops. How did you uh, sneak out Overlath? Out what? Overlath, the, uh, oh. the elf. <laughs> the, the elf. Well, like I said, the um, uh, 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 Greenlawn does a does deliveries every morning, so we 
get him covered up with vegetables in the cart. <laughs> uh, and once he's a couple districts away, we unpack him and point him in the direction of the nearest uh, airship. All right. Yeah. So I'll say probably within a week, uh, he managed to lay low enough in the upper wards and book passage out of uh, Sharn. And honestly, once the, uh, once the watch, you know, once that first week has passed and the watch is dealing with their fallout, they're not going to be looking for him. Oh, yeah. So, um, I think at this point, so um, you pass on the story. It takes them a good few weeks to make sure they have all of their, everything in order. You know, like go through everything with a fine tooth comb to make sure, you know, this is a big story. Like they are big enough paper to break this, but this is still a pretty uh, hefty thing to take down one of the, uh, the three contenders for, you know, uh, controlling House Caneth. So it takes about a little over a week for them to pull all this together. That edition finally comes out. There is a huge buzz all around town about this. You're not really sure what's going to happen anywhere else, but you do know in town, this is a massive, massive buzz. And the local uh, Caneth uh, West, which is the division that is in charge, <laughs> puts out all of these things, distancing themselves and saying that they had nothing to do with that. They are not affiliated with that, that section. This is all underneath the, uh, yeah, and subtly starting to say that, you know, clearly if they had been in full control of uh, House Caneth, that, you know, this sort of thing wouldn't have happened. Basically using this opportunity to try and uh, wheedle out the uh, other, the other contender as well. And slightly in some of their statements, kind of implying that maybe they helped uh, break the story open, you know, and, you know, you know, because it's what you do. It's business practice, but uh, everything is in an uproar for a while. But um, where do we see all of you about a month after that story breaks? Well, Hazel will be trying to help. Hazel will have de developed a strong affinity towards the Warforged community and will be helping any of them that she knows has that necro capacitor inside of them mm -hmm. they'll be trying to help them get it out um and you know just in general helping the warforged community okay um, she will at some point uh have written an obituary for watcher even though she mm -hmm. knew nothing about him um you know and probably even done kind of an anti-obituary about otara and explained how she had been you know manipulating the Warforged community and putting them in debt that they couldn't afford and all of that. Nice. And so Hazel starts getting like more of a, rather than being kind of like the, the workman type uh, articles that you've been doing, you're starting to get a little bit more of a reputation for doing this investigative reporting and doing a little bit more hard hitting material. So of course, you know, the, uh, the chief starts leaning on you to uh, start delivering more stories like that. And not any damn stories about food. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a good cream puff piece. I really don't see the problem here. I get it. Uh, does anyone else have an idea of what what you're uh, what you're doing about a month after that story breaks? So after that first story, that burned a lot of the people who are high up in that garrison of the watch. Mm -hmm. um, Mac is going to be relentlessly um, burning the whole thing to the ground, just um, digging up crap and exposing anyone who's ever been um, shitty or shady from that garrison and just basically declaring war <laughs> on, on them and uh, trying to get them uh, shut down or replaced as much nice. as possible. I like it. Any thoughts for the other of you on what you're doing th about a month out? I think Charples is probably going to take a leave from the paper and work on his next book, which would be about this experience. Um, or more specifically about the political relationships of the houses uh, because he doesn't have enough enemies and wants to make more. <laughs> Makes perfect really? sense. Yeah. 
It's a talent. And, and also, mean, he, he turns down the job offer from the Chronicle. He doesn't even know. <laughs> the place is so clean, it's sterile. Creepy. <laughs> And I will be most likely place. standing by uh, Max's side uh, while he's going through his vendetta against the watch um, to make sure that, you know, nothing blows back on him. <laughs> yeah, and I imagine Kithra has a few moments of, you know, roughing up anonymous people whose voices sound a lot like uh, watch officers that <laughs> managed to... Uh, what did you say? Get it again? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does does Kithra start carrying the uh, manacles around? With her? <laughs> yeah, just for giggles. And I, I think our our final scene. Um, I think uh, we have Mac working on one of these articles, and Kithra is kind of like standing over him. Gilmer is excitedly like uh, you know working on something to deliver coffee to everybody's uh, t- desks during the day. <laughs> there, there's this little cup, and if you put this cup in here, it makes the coffee. <laughs> wow! And if you have this I'm vacuum gonna... tube thing, you put the coffee in the vacuum tube thing <laughs> and I'm shoot gonna call it, it to somebody's <laughs> desk. Gilmer Chino. <laughs> <laughs> so while all this is going on, um, Lorella walks up to Hazel and says, it look, looking over at Mac, and she's like, I don't know how he gave up a story like that. Which story? Oh, we, we all know that, that that whatever you were working on for that last month before this thing broke, that's what the Chronicle published. He could have written his own ticket. Charples too. Mm, it might not have been a ticket that would have gone on a ride to the places you wanted. And you get this feeling like uh, Lorella, it does not even occur to her to play it safe. Like if she would have busted open the story, she would have totally wanted her name plastered on this thing. And oh, like, she would have been plastered. <laughs> this, is, this is why Lorella is not sent on these missions. She could not survive being the target of gnomish assassins. <laughs> and she's like, huh, well, if you ever find yourself in, in, in one of these stories again, especially while uh, Charples is busy writing that next book of his, just remember, I am always available. I'll keep it in mind, Lorella. <laughs> And I think at that point, we kind of zoom out from the newsroom and we see the uh, paper getting delivered again at various places. And we pan out even more. We see like the towers that go from the lower wards up into the middle wards and the towers that span there. And we see all of the, the encircling towers and the, the, the whole vertical majesty of uh, Sharn. And we pull back further and further until it's more and more in the distance. And then credits roll. <laughs> all right i hope everyone nice. enjoyed this it was yes. a lot of fun yeah yeah it was fun that was a good story well thank you very much for playing i really appreciate it this was this was a lot of fun to like get me to just kind of play around with eberron and i'm really glad that all of you came up with the characters that you did and the uh the framing device for the adventuring party that you did because that really let me do some things that I wouldn't normally do and you all made really great characters and this was a lot of fun to to, to uh, navigate through. Definitely. It was unique in a way that I wasn't expecting. Yeah, thank you. That was <laughs> yeah. that was it was a nice framing device to don't think about playing like that and it really should think about it more like that. Especially in Eberron. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I have a I have something to ask all of you, but I'm going to ask it once we stop recording. So for now, I just like to ask John, do you have anything you'd like to say to sign off here? Uh, everyone have a safe, uh, full, and fulfilling 2021, and stop writing Year of Hellscape on your checks. <laughs> PK, what about you? I uh, just wanted to thank anybody who is listening for coming along for the ride. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. It was uh, a good time for us to be able to uh, try something different and really sort of go outside of the norm for uh, 
I think both D and D and Quest. Yeah, definitely. Bob, do you have any last minute thoughts you'd like to share? Yeah, uh, thanks for coming along on the ride with us, and um, and thank you. Jared for facilitating the whole thing and thank you to my fellow players for uh, for creating engaging characters that were a lot of fun to play off of and everybody just try to be good to each other and and until this thing is gone wear a friggin mask yeah <laughs> it's not over yet emphatically and, yes you know like just be smart all right and do you have any final thoughts yeah Stay hopeful, stay kind, and remember only one impossible problem at a time. <laughs> and once again, like TK said, thank you for anybody that is watching or listening to this. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I know I had a lot of fun running this and looking forward to even more gaming in the future. Be good to each other. Thank you and good night.